Terry? Yes, I'm listening to you. Yeah. Yes, and I'm listening to you, so we're good to go. So, uh, Terry, uh, this is Mark. So, uh, as I told you before, this is for the uh, interview for uh, Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. So, I just need to get a little bit of background on you. So, I understand that you are a musician in Paris. So, how did you first get started playing music? And tell us a little bit about your background in music and what you're trying to do with your sound. Okay. Um, it's making now 15 years now I'm singing um, soul, R&B, um, electro music all around the world. And um, I'm from Cameroon, but I'm living in London sometime for my music business and sometime in Spain and Italy because I'm working with many composers and um, DJs from that uh, countries, even uh, from with some uh, Indians, in, uh, some composers from um, India and Japan too. So I'm an international singer and writer because I'm a writer too, and uh, and I'm a great melody. And uh, so now um, I have many releases in um, in many platforms like iTunes. These are Spotify uh, around the world, and uh, but music it's um, at the first time my passion because that passion was given to me to my father who, who died now 19 years ago on, for his soul, and uh, my father was uh, some musician in Africa in the 50s or 60s uh, in Africa in Cameroon, and uh, that passion come from him because he gave me that. Um, that blood, musical musical blood, you know. <laughs> and uh, my um, inspiration comes from Motown music, like Jackson 5, Art Franklin, Otis Redding, Marvin Gaye, <laughs> Steve Wonder, you know, all that great, great <laughs> artist of, of oh, the 60s, 70s. <laughs> so your sound, some okay. of their sound, so you're trying to bring back the 60s, 70s sound? Of music, so a little bit more of that soulful kind of sound. Is that what you're going for in your in your own personal music? Yes, uh, that that music is very influenced me for my creation. But I'm very um, inspired by that music. But I took the best of that music to create my own music and. Uh, so that I have many people who like my music and my voice because I have my style and um, I have some soulful voice, like many people told to me, and some unique color <laughs> of my voice. Is that make my my trademark? You know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Sounds like you have a very unique trademark. When I was listening to the music, it sounded really good, and we're actually going to play some after we're done with the interview, so our audience will get to hear some of it as well. Now your music is uh, now you're from Cameroon. And I know that's one of the African nations and everything. Do you find that some of your homeland also inspires your music as well? Do you try to incorporate some of the uh, music from your homeland as well? I know that you're definitely influenced by America's music, but do you ever incorporate either the music or the dance from your own homeland? Because I'm, I'm good friends with uh, I was good friends before he passed with Baba Chuck Davis, who ran the African American Dance Ensemble. So there's always been a tremendous interest here in African music and African dance. As a matter of fact, we have a couple of African dance uh, troops and African drum troops and things of that nature that are Durham-based, Durham, North Carolina-based. But I was just wondering, do you try to bring some of that sound from your own country into your music as well? Yes, yes, yes. Um, the, my homeland music called Makosa, it's uh, from Cameroon, especially from a town like calling um, Douala. And uh, yes, I was in France with many big artists of my my country, and uh, that artist, many artists of that of that town, uh, bring, give me a lot of inspiration, especially when I beginning to in the music industry, you know. And um, after that, uh, because it's my roots, you know. <laughs> and after that, I was very inspired by Michael Jackson, all that <laughs> American singer, American artist, you know. But right. at the beginning, it was from my homeland, Cameroon, from Douala. <laughs> okay, cool. And uh, were either of your parents uh, musicians? And do you have any siblings or any of them musicians as well? Uh, my father was... Uh, 
some jazz musician in the 60s of 50s 60s you know in africa and um and he and he and he had and he had, uh, and he had a lot of um, collection of of new of uh, vinyls. How he said? Yes, vinyls. Uh, the the vinyl vinyl song, you know, old song, old 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 song of the of the sixties. And and I was raised in that in that movement, in that ambiance. You know, you understand what I mean? Yes. And uh, and so. After that, I decided to become artist. <laughs> and uh, what, voilà. age did you become, what age did you become a musician? Because I don't even know. How old are you now, again, if you'll remind me, Terry, how old you are now? And uh, also, when did you decide that you were going to become an artist yourself? Were you in your teen years or were you a young adult? Ah, when I was young adult, because it wasn't very easy because uh, my family... When I told them I decided to be artist, it wasn't. <laughs> they don't took the decision very, very, very well because they was very afraid about for me for my future. You know, I said I told them no, don't worry, it's my decision, and uh, even what happened, I will go to. I will make everything to uh, to achieve my goal. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and every time I was uh, just working step by step to to be recognized by the professional and after that I began to work with many labels around the world in Spain, in Italy, in France too. Uh, voila. <laughs> and who were some of the uh, musicians that you've had the pleasure of working with? And are, um, I'm imagining that it was the best of one. Have you had any chance to work with any major national artists or international artists that people might recognize or, or know about in your career? Um, yes, in France, I have the chance to work with uh, a composer who is very famous here in France. His name is Patrick Rofay. He, he, he worked with many, many biggest uh, soul R&B French artists here who sold millions, <laughs> millions, millions of copies here, you know. And um, after that, um, I was, uh, I was, um, uh, how do you say, I was um, uh, choose by some international composer who made make a big hit for the dance music in the 90s. His name is DJ Molela, who worked with uh, a girl, sing, girl singer whose name is uh, Gala, who made a big dance hit in the 90s. The name of the song was Freed from Desire, you know, some dance hit who was very, very huge hit around the world. Like they sold like 10 million copies, you know, in the 90s with that song. Oh, wow. And uh, yes, and uh, that guy just saw my show on TV on the internet. I was singing in show in French in French show TV, and uh, he contact my he, he contact me by email. Say, oh Terry, I like your voice, your style, but that man doesn't speak <laughs> no French languages. Just listen my voice and see my look, my my style. He say, oh, I want to work with that guy, and they contact me like that and. And I worked with them maybe uh, five or six years in Italy, you know, after, after that, wow. we made, we made many, many singles and uh, I traveled many, many years in, um, in Italy, in Milano, Roma, <laughs> many towns in Italy for, for my shows, you know, in the clubs, in the big auditorium. It was very, very nice, you know, and now I'm with the, another label in uh, Ibiza in Spain, with who I'm, uh, I'm releasing my, my songs and, uh, in that label, I'm very free because I can. They let me do what I what I'm feeling when how, about my creation. I'm very free to create what I want to do, and uh, every time they are very happy to to work to collaborate with me because they respect my my creation. You understand what I mean? Yeah, definitely understand what you mean. Um, now, one of the things <laughs> that artists here have talked about, musicians here have talked about all the time is the fact that um, it's um, very difficult to get their music on the radio locally, um, particularly if they're, um, like, not that known or if they're not, like, with a major label or whatever of that nature. Do y'all have that same problem on the international scene? Because I know here that becomes an issue where some artists that are great artists will find it hard for them to crack the um, the radio market in the with the commercial radio stations, so they wind up going to podcasts or they wind up going to internet radio or, or low-power radio stations or smaller radio stations because a lot of those are more open to 
playing uh, independent musicians. Do you find the same thing to happen globally? Um, to, tell the, to tell the truth, but at the beginning, it wasn't very easy to have the radio, big radios for promoting my music, but uh, I had a chance to have, to be, to have the, the good connections, you know, and uh, because, you know, in this business, if you don't have a good connection, it's not easy to have some some good promotion, you know, about about your your creation in general, you know, in music, uh, maybe in art, like band, banter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, the chance I had, I had at the beginning, I was very I have a good entourage, you know, like composer who already have the contacts in the big radios, like that man from Italy who was working with that singer Gala. Uh, he was like uh, one of the biggest, biggest composer for, from Italy who, who uh, many artists were was, who, who was dreaming to work with him, you know, but that man chose me. <laughs> but after that, I, for me, I have all the biggest radio there was open for me. You understand what I mean? And um, after that, I say okay, great, but I know it's not easy for the young artists who begin in the in the in the in the industry to be listened by the biggest radio because all that it's business at the beginning, you know, because they they have the contract with the sponsor and all that, uh, you know. But for me, I think I have chance to to be a to be a, have a good good team around me since I began into singing, so I was. I have a chance to be uh, a welcoming in the main, in the many small or biggest radio, you know, in France or in many countries around the world, you know. <laughs> Definitely. And what's one of the best places that you played at? Do you remember any of the shows that you've had so far? And which shows really uh, uh, you were inspired by or that you uh, want to tell our audience about? Maybe there was a show that really, or a couple of shows that you really were impressed by that you were a part of. So if you want to tell us about those shows, that would be great. Um, to tell to tell you, uh, Mark, I think it was in Africa, in Cameroon, when I was uh, on tour and on touring there in 2000. It's like a long time now, <laughs> it's 19 years. But I was playing uh, because my father died dead in 2000, and um, after his funeral, uh, I, I had the opportunity to to work with uh, one of the biggest singer from South Africa. Her name is uh, Brenda Fassi. She was the niece of uh, the um, of the late uh, and the president, former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. Right. And uh, that maybe you know her, Brenda Fassi. She's very very famous because in in South Africa, in all Africa, and maybe in England, England too, uh, in many countries uh, around the world. That lady was on uh, on tour in Africa in 2000. And uh, one of my friends, one of the friends of my grand sister, was on the funeral of my father. And uh, my grand sister told to that man, uh, my brother is a singer. Can you listen his music and see what you can do? He said, okay. And I was uh, at that time. I bring, I broke, yeah, I broke my uh, my my video video tape. And uh, that man, his name is uh, Leonard Chatelain. He was very biggest reporter, you know, <laughs> in Africa in Cameroon. He listened to my music. He said, wow, amazing. I love his voice, music. Okay. I'm the uh, organizer of the Brenda Fassi touring in this time in Africa. Do you want to, to work with her? I said, yeah, why, why not? But Brenda Fassi listened first my music. And when she listened to my music, she said, oh, I want this guy in, in the, at the first part of my, of my show. <laughs> For me, it was unbelievable, in, unbelievable you know, <laughs> Mark. And... Um, so after that, I was touring in maybe 10 or 20,000 people in a big stadium. You know, it was very impressive for me because <laughs> for me, it was the first time to sing in, in front of a lot of people like that, you know. It's, it was at that time, I was very impressed, impressed to sing in front of a lot of people. But two years ago, I sing in France too, in some small show, but it was great too. But... <laughs> but the the very very biggest one it was when I was in Africa in Cameroon in Douala in that oh, show wow. with Brenda Fassi. <laughs>
And uh, if people want to um, see you perform now, where where are you mostly performing at now? Are you performing mostly at clubs? Or are you doing the cruise ship thing? Where What kind of venues are you playing in now? If people want to see you, if they happen to be traveling into Europe and want to see you, what kind of venues are you playing at? And how, how do they find you performing, or are you performing on a regular basis? But at the first time, I was when I was in Italy, in Milan or Roma, I was playing in the clubs because my music was for the clubs, you know, like club, electro, electro club music, you know, but I was playing sometime in auditorium to there because when I was making some showcase, you know, maybe while I was singing five or six songs, you know, with some guitarist player or some piano player, you know, because I like live music too. And, uh, but I think the most time I was singing was in a club because the, my music was for clubbing, you know, and um, but when I was in Africa, it was in the big, biggest uh, uh, stage with many, many musicians like pianists, drum bass, and many. You know, you see what I mean. Yeah. And uh, but I, I to tell you the truth, I, I prefer to sing in the auditorium because there I can express myself very well and uh, to ch- I share and share emotion with people. You know, because music is for sharing with people. You know and sharing love. And for me, music is just love, you know. <laughs> yeah. And the show that you do, do you try to borrow from Michael Jackson? Is it, is it just a singing show, or do you try to add, like, some tech, um, you know, some technical stuff and, like, some lights and lasers and things of that nature, or do you just keep it very simple with just you singing to the audience, or do you add, like, the special effects? Um, you know, uh, Mark, uh, Michael Jackson is one of my biggest inspiration and uh when i was singing you know uh yes i like to have on stage okay many effects but sometimes i like to have some pure uh, some pure um uh just uh, pure emotion just one light and one just like live music like when the that whole blues you know blues blues singer was on stage with some just guitarist, a little light, and to to create some ambiance so people so people be close to you. You know what I mean. And uh, I like the both um, style of of concert, you know. But I like I prefer the live live concert where you can be most close of people and share your emotions and. Um, just give them give them your feeling and uh, so they give back a feeling too and you know what i mean <laughs> yeah definitely i definitely understand what you mean um now you now as you're doing this music and everything are you um, also helping to support your own family I mean, you said your dad had passed away but i don't know is your mom still living and do you have any siblings or do you have any family of your own and are, and if so how are they doing in terms of helping you with the music, because you said when you first decided to go into music, your own family wasn't into it. So um, how are they feeling about the music now? Are they supporting you? And do you have any uh, family of your own? Okay, to tell you the truth, uh, Mark, uh, at this time, um, you know, it's not easy, but uh, when I began in music, my family was, okay, say, okay, do your thing, but we will see what happened in 10 years or 11 years, blah, blah, blah. But uh my mother was every time supporting me but some of part of my family because i come from a big family because we are eight eight children you know <laughs> and some of them wasn't <laughs> wasn't supporting me because they say oh musician is not so real life blah 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 i say okay it's my life and i, and I will live it like i like i want to live live it live my life understand what i mean but my mother was supporting me and some brother and sister of mine but some i've never won not but i said okay it's life the important in life you know you know uh mark is just to be happy to do what you what you like what you love because when you have faith in your heart nothing can stop you you understand what i mean oh yeah definitely so it sounds to me like uh, and uh and when i lost my father 90 years ago and my mother maybe maybe three years or four maybe three sorry maybe three months ago it was very, very difficult to me, you know, but but music gives me that that strength to 
to go up, you understand, right. to believe in life because I was very, very down after when I lost mm. my, my mother three, year, three, month, three months ago. And uh, I lost my sisters to maybe one month after my mother, you know. It was a very difficult time for me and a part of my family. And, um, but music was every time my only um, strength, my only uh, air, you know. My only, the only thing with who I can uh, make me free. You understand what I mean? Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, and how important is, is uh, you just mentioned it a little bit, but how important is faith to you in terms of like uh, going into this career and everything? It sounds to me like faith is very important to you. And I don't know if you're a Christian, Muslim or whatever, but it definitely sounds like the whole concept of faith is very important to helping you get through the music and also it might even help you be inspired and inspire some of the music. Um, about my, um, yes, I'm someone who is very spiritual because I believe in God and I say without God, we can do every, every, all the things we are doing in this earth, you know, and, uh, I think it was your question about my, my, about, about my, um, my religion, my, my, my spiritual, my spirituality is that? Yeah. How, how spirituality impacts your music, how, whether find it impacting your music and how it impacts your music. Yes, uh, everything comes from God, you know, and uh, I, I can't do this without, without God because God gave me that strength to, to go up every day. And uh, without, without him, I, I think I, can, I cannot do all I have done all these 15, 16 years ago. You understand what I mean? I do understand what you mean. And uh, the other question I was going to ask you is, what? how would you describe what the songs are about? I mean, are you basically, are most of your songs, because some of those that you sent me were very much about romance and uh, about uh, love and happiness and things of that nature, but I don't know if that's all that you do. Or What, what would you say are your primary themes within your music, within your own personal music? About about the theme. The theme. Uh, like what is your music yes, about? Yes, but okay, what my music talking about? But and generally, I'm talking about love, about um, peace and love because I'm so, I'm some peace man, you know. But because for me, uh, peace is the uh, most important thing for everyone in this earth, you know. So that one of my songs calling peace and love. And uh, that's I created that song. I write, I wrote the song, the melody, and uh, the lyrics because when uh, I'm thinking about what all what happened in this earth, in many countries, it's a war, and uh, and I write this song against the racism, against the intolerances because many people in this earth is intolerance, you know, make intolerance, intolerances. You understand what I mean? And uh, the most part of my songs talking about peace, love, uh, about uh, positivity, you know. But sometimes some of my songs talking about my father too, because when I lost my father in 2000, I dedicate I dedicate him one song we call we call uh, just only missing. But what song was like a, a ballad, you know? With uh, some, I took some uh, gospel choir. I'm singing with some piano, you know, very spiritual, you know. And uh, many people like lo- like that song, uh, like that song because they feel very close because that song talked to them because it's for people who lost some sh- uh, some loving uh, person, you know. And uh, voila. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's the most of the part of the what I'm I'm talking in my song, love, peace, uh, life, you know, and uh, that's all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And but, um, but you know, yes, tell me, tell me. Yeah, I'm saying, and um, now I know you you're a singer. Do you um play any instruments as well? And if so, what instruments do you play? Because like I said, I know that in the African culture, I mean, in the different continents. The different countries on Africa, a lot of people learn how to play the djembe and the different drums and things of that nature. But 
Do you? I know you sing, but do you play any instruments of your own? Uh, I'm playing piano, but okay. not a lot because, to tell you the truth, <laughs> I'm not doing uh, a lot of concert conservatory. I was there when I was younger, but for me it was too boring, and I stopped to playing. I stopped to go in the conservatory because uh, I was just uh, feeling a lot uh, create the melodies, you know. But uh, I'm playing some little piano. I'm playing some drums too. In, in Africa, we call that tam tam, <laughs> you know. Right. And djembe, you know djembe. Yes, I know the djembe. Yes, I play in djembe <laughs> and piano, but my my uh, my chord is a uh, thing just to sing because I work with many uh, um, professor of lyric, you know, lyric music like opera. You know Pavarotti. You know Pavarotti. Pavarotti was uh, like a uh, bigger singer in the 90s, I think. Begin, yes, he was very famous. It's a uh, opera singer, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, I had the chance when I was younger to work to to learn how to sing with some professor who were working with Pavarotti for like um, in the lyrics music, you know, in the classic music. And we, I worked too with some uh, gospel choir to learn how to to uh, to breathe when I'm singing, you know, to use my voice. And now <laughs> I I know how to use my voice because all that people when I was younger helped me and learned me how to use it. Well, and uh, <laughs> where are you hoping to be with your music, say uh, next year or five years from now? Where are you hoping to be in terms of uh, your performances? Um, and um, how many uh, CDs have you put out so far, or have you put out any CDs? I know you put out different music on uh, the Internet, but have you put out any um, full CDs or full, um, well, but most people are doing CDs now, they're not doing albums, but have you done any CDs out there of your own music yet? And uh, if so, on which label? Uh, yes, uh, I had a chance in the past to to be invited by many, many shows, French TV, uh, in Switzerland TV too, where I was singing, and uh, even in Italy too, I was singing in, in some shows there. But, uh, but the most, all my my um, my music, my video clip was before on YouTube, and after that I was invited to sing in some uh, some shows around the world. But um, the the part, the most part of time, my music is online, you know in iTunes, uh, Deezer, Spotify, because all that was, um, uh, how, is it, how to say, uh, all, all my music was put online by the, by the labels, you know, but because me, I'm just in the part of the creation when I, I make in studio, make my recording, and after that, I make the mixing with my team because I have working with many composers and, and DJs, you know, like I told you before, and... Um, but the most of my music is on on the platform, you know, online. Right. Yeah, and that's one of the other things I was going to talk to you about was it seems to me like you're one of those people that is definitely having success through the internet, and that seems to be the way that a lot of people are actually becoming um, even stars on the global scene. Is that it seems like the internet, whether it's YouTube or Reverb Nation or some of these other platforms, have made it a lot easier for uh, musicians to get their word out to the world and not just have to depend on like. A major record label, so it seems like you're taking advantage of that. I know that uh, before he passed away, Prince was an advocate of uh, the artists having control of their own music and everything, and not so much as it being controlled by the big studios and everything. So it sounds to me like you were, you're you're an example of what he was talking about. The whole thing that you can get more out there if you're uh, using the different platforms that are out there, like YouTube and like I said, Reverb Nation, uh, SoundCloud, things of that nature. Um, okay, but you know, Mark, when you begin in the business, it's not easy to have the control of all your music because there are many, many, many sharks in the business, you know, it's not easy. And, uh, and I have made all that sharks, you know, in my past. And, uh, because I have many songs of mine where I don't have the, the rights on that song because that people in that label, took all the rights for them and uh, after that I 
I was young, you know, and so that at this time I'm trying to to have more control in my music, and uh, it's not easy because when you sign with some label, independent label like mine, who is in uh, Ibiza, they took 50% of your work. You understand what I mean? Because blah blah blah, they make the promo, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and uh, so after that we have just 50% to share with the composer, with the with the musicians and uh, okay you understand what i mean yeah. and um the most of the the thing for me the most important thing in the music is to share music with people you understand because at the beginning music for me is my passion my first passion i'm not looking i'm not someone who are have a a, a career plan, you know, like say, I just want to want, want a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not my goal. My goal is to share music before with the people. If people like my music, I would be happy to, to win a lot, to want a lot of money. Okay. But it's not my, my, my first condition. You understand what I mean? Yes. And, and uh, you... yes, go on, go on. I'm listening to you. Yeah, I'm saying that seems to be the problem even with American musicians. Is, uh, too often they get caught up in the uh, one you just mentioned that you've gotten uh, somebody that apparently it cheated you out of um, the rights to your music. And I know a lot of people don't study the business side of the music industry, but it sounds to me like one of the things that you're doing is that you're doing it the right way and that you're actually making sure that you have um, on your this time around. Maybe not, you might not have done it the first time around, but this time around, it seems like you're making sure that all the contracts are done correctly and that all the things are done in a correct way, and that you're also making sure that uh, people understand that it's about the passion that you have for your music and not necessarily the um, the rewards that might come with the music. You definitely want the rewards, but at the same time, it seems it's about the passion and also making sure that everything is done legally and correctly. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so that at this time, I'm looking for some some tour manager, you know, for my touring, because I think I have enough sound, enough music for making some shows in many places and uh, maybe for one or two hours of music life, you know, show life. But for that, I need to find some some tour manager, some musicians with who I will go on tour and road. For that, I'm working now with my team because we are not a lot of people, a lot of people maybe three or four people we are looking for around the world in many countries, maybe like Spain, Italy, USA too, uh, to see how we can, uh, uh, we can create this team for this touring for 2020, you know? Right. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, the best thing for me is just uh, to have this touring, uh, to organize this touring and to do it after around the world, but I know I'm not Michael Jackson or, <laughs> or Madonna or Beyonce, but I know some people in this earth are listen to my music because many people give me feedback, say, oh, we like this song, we love when, when, or where, we can see you on live. I say, okay, just wait, one day I will be, <laughs> I will come to see you. Everyone in the world for my for, for my for my touring, and I will tell you. But uh, like I told you, for me, music is for sharing, and uh, oh, yeah. before at the first time, it's my passion. Definitely. Before that, I'm not no, rich. <laughs> no, no, I understand. We're all trying to make it and be successful in all that we're doing. Now, here in the states, a lot of times the musicians are always saying, complaining that. Um, they don't they they don't get paid enough or they don't make enough money just off of their music so they wind up having to get a side hustle. Now that might be working at a restaurant, that might be working at a um, office, that might be doing mailroom work. You know the side hustles can vary, but sometimes the side hustles can also interfere with the dream and then that puts people off from a time. So I was wondering, has that been an issue with you as well? Have you had to have you had to have like a a nine to five job in addition to the music, or are you just strictly concentrating only on the music and gonna make it on the music regardless of whatever? Or have you actually found yourself having to do like little side jobs in order just to put bread on the table and be able to survive? 
Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, sometime I'm working in part time in um, some events company, you know, but not maybe uh, six hour per per week just because it's okay, like you said, to put some bread on the table. But my major time is I am on studio, you know, working with my composers, with my uh, my musician. But uh, like I said to you, Mark, I'm not rich, but I'm rich with music because Definitely. that music comes from my heart, you know. And uh, like I told you, my goal is not to, to win a lot of money in the music industry. My goal is just to share music with people, to share love, because music for me is love, like I told you. And um, like I told you, if I win, if I win, Yes, if I win some uh, some uh, Grammy, maybe in a few years, I will be happy. But it's not my goal. You understand what I mean? Yes. My goal is just okay. to share music, share love. And if people give me bad feedback, I will be the most happy man in the world. You understand what I mean? Yes, I understand totally. Now, um, do you have your own studio? Hello, Mark? Do you, record it, do you have your own studio or do you record at somebody else's studio? Mark? Oh. Yes, I'm here. Mark, are you there? 